Welcome back. This video follows on from the previous one, which was a stepping stone to understanding bond day count conventions and the calculation of accrued interest. So we've already looked at the basics of a bond and the cash flows on a bond, but we really looked at it from the perspective of a bond issuer. In this one, we'll be looking at day count conventions and accrued interest, and therefore more from the perspective of a bond investor. You should now be familiar with who issues bonds and the basic structure of the bonds and be familiar with the basic jargon of par value, nominal, coupon, frequency of payment and maturity or redemption. We'll now concentrate on the bottom part of the screen. Remember that once a bond is issued, it is now freely tradable in the secondary market and the price of the bond is set by buyers and sellers interacting. In other words, the market sets the price. And you may well have heard of the term that bonds are quoted clean and settled dirty. The clean price is the price without any accrued interest. And the dirty price is the amount you actually pay for the bond when you settle, which is the clean price plus the accrued interest. So that's what we need to look at now, how we calculate the accrued interest to work out the settlement price of the bond. We've got here a bond that pays twice a year. It makes a coupon payment on the 15th of January and the next one is on the 15th of July. Now, because this is a semi-annual paying bond, the coupon payment is gonna be half the annual coupon and each coupon represents the interest for the previous six month period. Let's say that you as an investor buy the bond on the 12th of May and the clean price or the market price is 115.65. If the clean price was all that an investor had to pay, then other things remaining the same. It would be rational to buy the bond on the 14th of July, keep it for one day and get six months worth of interest. So that's not gonna work. And even over here on the 12th of May, if you only paid the clean price, you'd be keeping the bond for two months and getting six months worth of interest. That's where the dirty price comes into it. Because when you buy the bond, you pay not only the clean price, but you have to pay the accrued interest on that bond. Next step is to calculate what that accrued interest is. So you've got to pay interest that has attached itself to the bond from the last coupon date to the date that you settle for the bond. In other words, there needs to be a calculation of how many days there has been since the last coupon was paid and how many days in that coupon paying period and the accrued interest will be that proportion of the next coupon payment. So the numerator is going to be the days since the last coupon till settlement day. And the denominator over here will be the number of days in that coupon paying period. And you divide one by the other and that gives you the fraction of the coupon payment that you have to pay. So far so good but there are a number of day count conventions that determine A, how many days have passed, and B, how many days there are in the period. There are a number of them, but these three are the three major ones. So on the left-hand side of the dividing line, that's the numerator, and that's the number of days since the last coupon was paid. And the denominator is the number of days in the coupon paying period. So the three conventions are actual actual, 3360, which is the convention used for American corporate bonds, and the 30E360, which is the European equivalent of 3360. Now let's see how each of these work. Got a spreadsheet over here and we filled in some of the details. We're settling on the 12th of May and just picked an arbitrary maturity date, which is 15th of July, 2030. Got to be a bit careful over here because sometimes if you just plug in 30, Excel reads that as 1930. So you just got to be a little bit careful of that. Semi-annual paying bond with a 3% coupon. So given the information we have here, we can work out when the last coupon payment was and when the next coupon payment is going to be. And essentially the bond will pay coupons on the 15th of July and the 15th of January every year. Now, handy little uh, function that Excel has, Coop PCD works out the date of the coupon prior to settlement and 
Coop NCD works out the date of the next coupon. NCD, next coupon date. And we're assuming a clean price of 115.65. So let's have a look at how the calculations work. And start off with actual actual. Now the numerator over here, how many days since the last coupon payment? Well, it's simply gonna be the difference between the last coupon date and the settlement date, and that's 117 days. How many days in the coupon paying period? Again, because this is actual actual, you look at the number of days between the last coupon payment, 15th of January, and the next coupon payment, 15th of July, and that works out at 181. The coupon payment itself is gonna be half the annual coupon payment because coupon payment is every six months. Therefore, the accrued interest is gonna be that coupon payment multiplied by that fraction, which works out at 0.9696%. And you turn that into a monetary amount, which is 0.9696 per 100 nominal of bond. And that's gotta be added to the clean price to get the dirty price. So coupon payment is half the annual because it's a semi-annual paying bond. The numerator and the denominator in the calculation, because it's an actual actual, you work out the actual number of days that you need and apply that fraction to the coupon to get the accrued interest. And then you can turn that into a monetary amount. And then you add that to the clean price. So that's your settlement price or your dirty price. Now let's have a look at the same dates, but using a 3360 convention. Now over here, the accrued days are the same, but the denominator, the days in the coupon period are taken as 180 because under the 3360 basis, you're assuming that each month has 30 days, irrespective of the number of days that it actually has. We'll have a look at how this is calculated in a minute, but once we've done these two calculations, then everything else follows on by the same method as we've done over there. There's a little function in Excel that calculates the number of days on a 360 day year. So all it needs are the start date, which is the last coupon, the end date, which is your settlement date, and the methodology. If you put false, it'll work it out on the American 3360. If you put true, it'll work it out on the European 3360. Just have a closer look at that and go down here. In the numerator, because it's 3360, in the numerator, you're assuming that each month has 30 days. Doesn't matter if it's got 28, 29, or 31. So from the 15th of January to the 15th of February is going to be 30 days. The same from 15th of February to the 15th of March, just assumed to have 30 days. Similarly, up to the 15th of, uh, up to the 15th of April. Now from the 15th of April to 15th of March is going to be 30 days, but you're settling three days before. So you take off the three days and add them up and that'll give you 117 days. Now let's just reveal everything for the remainder. Now you can see that sometimes the conventions are the same, but they're not always the same. If we play around with the settlement date, let's say we choose the 31st of May as settlement. You can see now that there's a difference between the American and the European conventions. And the difference is in the American convention, if you settle at the end of a month, EOM, and that month has 31 days, you count that final day. Whereas in the European methodology, just because you settle on the 31st of May, they'll just say there's 30 days in May, end of story. So that's why you have one less day in that methodology. Um, Let's take another date, another settlement date, 26th of Feb. Now over here, the days are slightly different. 
The difference being that January is a 30 day, 31 day month, so you've got 42 days there. And these two conventions are ignoring the 31st of January and saying January only has 30 days. So that's how bond day count conventions and accrued interest work. If you've seen the videos we had on money market accruals and day count conventions, you would now have all the major conventions that are used in the markets. I hope this has been helpful. This has been Abdullah. Thanks for listening.